So we still see a little bit of uh, here the nucleus, rosalis, and spinal trigeminal nucleus, Amtrak. And now we have another nucleus coming in here, which always has a distinctive shape, and this is the inferior olive nucleus. Okay, so the medullary pyramid right here lies right next to the inferior olive. And I believe on the next slide up, we'll see a nerve coming out right here. And you know that would be what? Hypobosal. Yeah, it always comes out here between the pyramid and the olive. We don't see it here, but any nerve coming out here would have to be the hypobosal. Okay, so we still see here the internal arcuate fibers a little bit wrapping around this way and contributing to the medial lemniscus, which stands up like this. And remember, we talked about three pathways kind of standing on top of each other here. The lower base is the medial lemniscus. The top is the MLF. And in between, tectospinal tract. Remember, the tectospinal tract goes from the tectum, which is the superior and inferior folliculus, down to the spinal cord, tectospinal tract. And specifically, this goes to the cervical spinal cord because Superior colliculus never has to do with vision, inferior colliculus with auditory information. And so you need to turn your head appropriately when you see something or when you hear something. And that's the tectospinal tract going down to the neck so you can turn your head appropriately. Okay, now we can see this a little better now, but this is the hypoglossal nucleus. And so recall we talked about a medial medullary syndrome. And the anterior spinal artery, the unsupplying spinal cord, su supplies the medial portion of the lower medulla. Okay, so the three classic parts of the medial medullary syndrome uh, are or occur when we involve the cortical spinal tract here in the pyramid, the medial lemniscus, and the hypoglossal nucleus. Okay, so the deficit would be, well, if you destroy this pyramid, the same side of the body, we meet for the opposite opposite side of the body. If you destroy the medial lemniscus here, if you lose vibration, proprioception, same side, opposite side. Uh, opposite side. And if you destroy the hypoglossal nucleus uh, with the tongue, well, let's just say this is the left hypoglossal nucleus with the tongue point to the left or to the right? To the left. Okay, so um, the opposite arm and leg are weak, the opposite arm and leg, you lose vibration, proprioception, but yet the tongue points away from the weakness in the sensory level. Okay, so this is the medial medullary syndrome. Very unique constellation of spinal cord there. Remember the blood vessel, anterior to spinal artery. Okay, so we have the hypoglossal nucleus, and um, here and here. And this has a very unique appearance here. This is the solitary nucleus and tract. Of course, the nuclei always appear white on all these, right? So here's the nucleus, and the tract kind of wraps around it. Area. Remember, the solitary nucleus has to do with taste, everything sensation, even blood pressure regulation, respiration, the sensory nucleus. Okay, you have in your handout listed all the different functions of the solitary nucleus. So remember to contrast that with nucleus ambiguous, which is a motor nucleus. And I could never have you identify nucleus ambiguous, right? Because it's ambiguous. But it's in the lateral medulla, it's out and about in this area. And you recall that that's the motor nucleus that's to do with uh, eventually cranial nerves 9 and 10. It's very important for talking and for swallowing. 